So today I'm going to look at the Commodore 64 cassette drive and yes, I have one, two, three of them. And this one, uh, the one without the lid that looks a bit shabby, uh, this is mine from back in the day and this pretty much works but doesn't seem to work on everything and I know it's got a few problems apart from the missing lid which is one thing. Um, that's mostly cosmetic though because it works without the lid. But yeah, um, out of all the tapes I've got, one of them it can't drive properly, I think that's Winter Games. And I've definitely got a few cassettes that it won't load. And the theory here is that, that the cassettes are probably good and the drive isn't. This one, the one with the actual lid, is one that I've borrowed off Lockmarney Goats, YouTube user. He'll probably be commenting on this video. And this one, um, I've tested out. I've like double checked some of the games that wouldn't work on this against this one. This one um, won't load some games that this one will. So I've definitely got a cassette. I think Nemesis is one of them. This game will load on this one and won't load on that one. So I know for a fact that there's definitely something wrong with this and there might be something wrong with both because I found another game and that was Blood Money and that loads on mine but won't load on this one. This one I got recently from eBay and the reason I got this one is because I just wanted a really cheap, you know, for parts not working cassette deck that had the lid on so I could use the lid for mine. So if we look at this one, here it is. I mean, it looks a bit shabby, but all I was really interested in was the lid. It actually came with the box, the original box, which I've never seen, and the manual. So there's the actual original manual for the C2N um, cassette drive. You can see this one here is super yellowed. Um, I never realized this is the thing that actually tells you, you know, how to type, you know, whether you write load and stuff like that and how to actually use it. So I, I, I've never seen this before, but that's, I, you know, someone just told me how to use it. I remember back in the day, but this was actually, you know, how you loaded stuff. So this is the actual drive. I haven't run this one yet. I have had a quick look at it. And as you can see, somebody's written on the front of it. They've written Dave Iron Lead. I don't know what's going on there. So yeah, it's super yellow. And I wasn't too bothered about it because I just wanted the lid. But I've had a quick look at this before. And here we go, and watch this. You press the button, and guess what? The lid is broken. It's actually cracked. So these parts here have snapped off. So I didn't buy this to, to get this working, I just wanted the lid, but the lid's broken. So and it's my fault, it's for parts not working anyway, but I think maybe the pieces of the lid are actually in there. Maybe we could try and weld them back on. So there's that, but this thing looks terrible. I mean, this one might actually work better. There's so much dust inside it and everything. So let me just quickly um, open this one up and let's just see if I can fish out the parts to the cassette, to the, um, to the lid. Here we go. Ooh, there's a lot of dirt in there. Hey, the, um, oh, the belt's a bit loose, but it doesn't look too bad right there is I don't know what that is. That is that. That's not off this, is it? There's a piece of something there. Oh, that's the only piece. So the actual pieces of the of the cassette deck have actually gone. So unfortunately, the the actual spare part that I wanted on this isn't actually there. Other than this, oh, I know what that is. There's supposed to be a little cover over there. Yeah, if you notice that the top of this. It's got a piece missing. So that is, that's just the bit that's fallen off there. I don't know if that's technically required to keep this working. So it's in pretty shabby condition, but like I said, I wasn't too bothered. So that's a bit unfortunate. Internally though, apart from it being really dirty, it doesn't look incredibly bad. Maybe this works reasonably well. It's gonna need some cleaning. Maybe I can experiment on this one in trying to get this working. So the plan of action then is to try and get these to work better. Starting with this one because it's mine and all, all it's got no lid, that should be fine. The things that can go wrong are um, the belt drive on the motor. Um, the, be the belt could be pretty bad and that's not working. I know for a fact this game, Winter Games, it's got quite a lot of tape on it. And in this one, in mine, um, it can't drive the tape properly. So it actually the tape doesn't actually turn. Yeah, th there is also the pinch roller that's down there. You can see it on this diagram here. There's a little roller wheel down there that grips onto that capstan there. And that's what pulls the tape through. Now that can go like shiny over time and then can't pull the tape through properly. So one of the things I could do is just uh, like rough that up a bit. 
and see if that makes any difference. Um, there are also, uh, when I open it up, there's a, I know for a fact there's a couple of electrolytic caps in here that have probably gone bad because these things are 30 years old. So my plan is, is that maybe replacing those could make a difference as well. Now, the other thing, and probably the last thing that I'll try, if I'm gonna try it at all, is the azimuth adjustment, which is what this hole is here for, is that if you press play there, there's a little screw there that you can actually adjust the alignment of the head, which is like, I think it aligns it on like an angle. Um, and the reason you wanna do that is because you wanna get the optimum amount of, of like, signal into the from the tape into the actual like computer now i'm going to do this last and maybe not at all and the reason for that is is that in general you probably won't have to adjust that because that'll just be set in the factory and then it just never moves so there's not really any good reason to actually just try and adjust that first because the chances are that's wrong i mean this is mine so i know the history of this and i haven't adjusted that ever ever at all so it's always been like that. And the history of this one, I don't actually know. Same with the eBay one. So that could be a problem, but I suspect that would be the last thing to try anyway. So as for the belt drives, I bought this pack of belt drives a while back. Hopefully one of these will fit this because I think this has got bad belt drives in it. Yeah, so the game I'm gonna I wanna try getting working first is this because I know for a fact this tape now works because I've seen it load on this one and it doesn't on this. So if I try one thing at a time, maybe I can try and find the thing that doesn't work. So I think the first thing to try is not actually the belt. It's probably roughing up this um, wheel down here, this pinch wheel or pinch roller, they call it in the diagram. So yeah, I've just got a little bit of, it's P180 sandpaper. And I'm just gonna try and rough up this wheel a bit. I don't know how I can really get to it that easily. Here we go, yeah. Um, so let's just try and rough that up. Mm, that doesn't feel that much better. Still not that great. I think I need rougher sandpaper. Yeah, so I'm going to cut off a little bit one of these sanding discs. This is P120. Let's give that a go. That is a lot rougher. Well, it still feels a bit smooth to me. Yeah, it still feels reasonably smooth. I don't think it's roughing it up at all. But it's probably cleaned off the top layer of whatever crud is on there. So we'll see if this does anything better. Oh, that feels a bit more grippy, actually. I'll do that a bit more. I'm probably getting down to like more softer rubber underneath. Yeah, that does feel better actually. That feels more grippy. So I think that's having an effect. I think I'm just taking off the surface layer of that's gone really shiny. And I'm getting down to more of the rubbery layer. I don't want to take too much off. Just give it a little bit of a clean. Don't want any bits of sand on the tape or anything. Oh, look at that. Look at the dirt that's coming off that. So that must be that top layer that I'm taking off. So yeah, I definitely don't want any of that on the tape. That is pretty dirty. So let me connect up a Commodore 64 and we'll see what we get. Let me just press play on the tape. Let's just give that a bit of a clean while it's running. Oh, that feels very grippy now. That's what we wanted. Oh yeah, that's gripping that cotton bud. Let's see how we do with Nemesis because this is one that didn't load on here. So let's see if we've improved Wait a minute, let's see if, see if we've improved the loading of this. So we definitely get this far before. And I, like I said, I think we get to a title screen, uh, a loading screen and we'll get some music, but the game would not work. Oh, it's not done very well there. It would normally get further than that. It's done even worse. It's actually done worse. So yeah, I know this tape, it's just completely balked at that point. 
That's a shame. So yeah, it's, it's actually got worse. That's just completely failed. Hopefully it's not destroyed the tape. Now we can verify that by using the other tape drive because this does work on the other tape drive. So yeah, this previously, again, did work on this one. So let's give this a go here and see if it still works. This video is gonna involve a lot of sitting around looking at tapes. It's quite tedious. So I'm happy with that. The tape still works. It's already got further. The other one is worse. So I don't know what to take away from that. Roughing up the pinch roller has made the, has made the loading worse. <laughs> so back to our lidless, back to our lidless drive. I think the next thing might be to open it up and have a look at the belts and see if one of these replacement belts will fit because the belts in this are probably really old and they may not be driving the motor properly. So that's definitely a thing worth looking at. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get all the mechanical fixes out of the way first. Once I've got the mechanical fixes done, we can start looking at the electrical fixes. So that's the next step, belts. It's really loose actually, so it probably, it probably has gone. I think this is just gonna, it's just gonna pop off. So, oh, well, that's the one for the tape counter. That's really bad. The tape counter one doesn't matter too much at the moment. It's more this one. This one has just got really loose over time. Let me see if one of the ones I've got in here, it's probably the biggest one in here, is a suitable replacement for it. I mean, it looks about the same size. Yeah. Let's try that. This is actually much easier to replace than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really hard. So uh, I thought you might have to disassemble something. Hmm, it's got a little twist in it. Do I need to get the twist out? Um, I don't know if that's any better than what was there. It seems too loose to me. I don't know. I suppose as long as it's driving it, it doesn't really matter. Well, let's go with that one. Hmm, I don't know. We'll see. So the band in there wasn't really that bad. So new belt. Here we go again with Nemesis. Let's see what we get. I mean, the tape's spinning, so that's good. At the very least, that hasn't gone wrong. I mean, it looks like it's spinning quite evenly, but it did look like that before. And it looks like it's stopped. Yeah, I think it's stopped. That has failed. So the belt's made no change. So it's not made anything worse. It's not made anything better. Let me just try one of the games that did work before and make sure that still works. I don't think this tape is spinning correctly. Now that might indicate an electrical problem because the belt's been changed. The pinch roll has been like roughed up. Well, maybe that new belt's not very good. I mean, the tape's loading, but maybe just this game can get away with it and the other games can't. I could definitely hear that it wasn't like spinning properly just before. Yeah, I can hear it going. Mm -hmm. I'll try and put the microphone near it. Oh, and as I do that, it just sounds perfectly normal. Okay, so I think next thing to do is open it up and we'll start looking for what I think might be an electrical problem now. Okay, so I think I'll take this board out, which has got the electronics on it. There is a schematic for this, so it might be worth looking that up. It's got this piece of shielding on the back. Something is keeping that attached. It's not this. This cable here is clipped in and screwed in with that. Let's unscrew that. Oh, what is that? What have I just unscrewed? Oh, it looks like that's something that holds the cassette in as well. So I've got to put that back correctly. So, oh, there we go. Is that going to come off now? Oh, so we've got three electrolytic capacitors on there. Now it's possible that they have gone. That doesn't want to come out. No, I don't know how that works. It's going to be very hard to work on with all these wires on it. 
I don't know how that comes off. I can't believe this. It feels like this is not a connector, but it, it's definitely a connector. Well, that'll have to stay on there. So maybe if I just desolder these. Yeah, so let's desolder this connection to the motor. That means I could have left that on there, actually. That would have been easier to do. I could have left that wire on there and left this thing connected, and I'll just desolder these instead. That is what I'm going to do, because I cannot get that connector out. There probably is a technique for doing that, but I don't know what it is. Okay, let's desolder this. So these are just the motor wires. This is just going to make it easier to work on. There's one. There's the other. Yeah, that's what I should have done in the first place. Right, that means I can flip this over here now and have a look at it. Finally. Well, firstly, there's a switch down here with lots of hair on it. And this looks like it was supposed to be grease that used to be for these buttons, but it's all gone now. There is plenty of hair stuck in here. So we've got, I could test these three capacitors because they are, they don't look bad, but they might have lost their values over time and that might be affecting something. That one is 47 microfarad 10 volt. What else have we got? This one here, I think is the same. That's that one. And this one, I don't know what that is. That is not, that is Sanyo, 47 microfarads, says 4725 on it. That is probably meant to be a 47 microfarad 10 volt capacitor, but they probably put a 25 in because that's all they had. So I can probably put the 47 microfarad 10 volt capacitors in there and that one will be fine. That says, 612 nanofarads, what? Can't be right. What? That's supposed to be 47 microfarads. Really? I'll have to check the schematic on that. that. Yeah, C1, that is, that capacitor is probably gone. But again, these are in circuit, so who knows what's happening in the circuit. And there's one here as well. That one's 95 microfarads again in circuit so none of them read what they say they are but that might be just because they're in circuit so it might be worth replacing all of these I think I've got some capacitors that can replace them 47 microfarad 15 16 volts so they look like suitable replacements they are a little bit larger there's one Right, we can have a look at these outside of the circuit now. Yeah, this one's still measuring 700 nanofarads. This one definitely says 47 on it. So I think that's supposed to be a 47. 54, 54, oh, that's about right, actually, 54. That's not far off. This one's 52. So these two measure the same. This one measures 700. So they might be good caps. I mean, just because the capacitance is okay doesn't mean that the caps aren't. They could be putting noise onto the line or don't know. But it doesn't look too bad for the caps. So maybe the caps aren't going to fix my problem either. But I just thought it's time to do it. It's been like 40 years. Maybe the caps should be replaced, especially on something that's like analog sensitive like this. I think that's going to make a big difference. These are Panasonic capacitors. These should be good for a few years. Right, that's one in. I'm just checking again that it still fits. It fits. And this all would have been hand built back in the day. Right, that's that one, and the last one, and this is the one that might not clear. So this one might be a problem. Oh no, it's going to be fine. That one is going to be fine.
Right, I've recapped this board. Let's put it back together and see if we made any difference. Or let's see if we're going to explode it because I put caps in the wrong way around. Right, computer's going on. Uh, nothing's exploded. Still working. That's good. <laughs> nothing's blown up. Let's see if we get any better results. So that took about 25, 30 minutes to do that. Most of the time was spent disassembling the cassette player and trying to get that stupid cable out. The motor's still working, so that means I've wired it up back again correctly. But yeah, the only thing that looked dodgy is one of these caps is different and it doesn't seem like it is what it's supposed to be. Come on, Nemesis, you can do it. <clears throat> You've got new caps. Of course caps fix everything. You just recap something and it works. I should have measured it with the oscilloscope. It's quite hard to get this thing working though while it's all in pieces. I could get the oscilloscope on it and have a look at what it's doing. That would really tell us exactly what's going on. I've got loading music. I don't think it got this far before, did it? So is this an improvement? Or have I just got lucky? Come on, Panasonic caps, you can do it. It takes quite a while to load. So I think what used to happen though is it used to get to the end and then just didn't work. So that was it. So you'd have to go through the whole loading process. You just get a gray screen at the end. It's quite exciting. Like the, the caps have actually done something. I mean, I suppose those caps are ancient and that, I don't, I didn't like the look of this Sanya one saying it was, it says 47.25 on it. I'll take a picture of it. Yeah, it, it says Sanyo 47.25, um, but it was measuring like 700, 700 microfarads or something, was it? I can't remember now, but it's not what it says on the tin. So maybe this Sanyo cap is the one that's bad. Uh, and these other two are Rubicons and they seem to be measuring about right. So I just replaced them all with 47 microfarad, 16 volt caps, because that's what I've got. I think it, it only probably needs 10, but it, it still sounds odd though. It sounds like it's losing speed sometimes. Yeah, it definitely sounded like it was slowing down there to me. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. The, the, the tape deck doesn't sound right. I mean, it's still loading and I, I know it's got, it'll account for a certain amount of fluctuation, but it's, it's definitely not sounding great. It sounds like it's slowing down. We've got to wait till the end though, because it would get this far and then just not work. The GoPro has run out of power that's recording the cassette player, but it's still running. It's still going. Oh, is it not going to work? What's this? So the, the cassette's still running here, but nothing's happening. Yeah, it looks like that's failed, I think. Yeah, it's got to the end of the tape now. It's going to hit the end of the tape. Ah, whoa. That did not work. That is not what Nemesis is supposed to do. I've not seen it do that before though. This is absolutely, that's bonkers. I don't know what that is. So I think it's an improvement, but there's probably still a problem with this. So um, I, I, can, I can hear the tape deck slowing down though. So I need to do some more investigation and find out what's happening. So it's the next day and I realized something. This 47 microfarad 25 volt capacitor is not a 47 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. It's a 0.47 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. That explains exactly why it was measuring at about 700 nanofarads or something. So I was blaming Commodore for putting the wrong cap in and it looks like they haven't. It's marked on the schematic. I had a look at the schematic. It is, it is marked on the schematic and it is part, um, it is running across the motor. Uh, I have goofed up, I've put something that is an order of magnitude wrong in here for this. So I'm gonna have to take it apart and replace this with a proper one. And I thought I didn't have one, but I looked around and I had this recapping kit from a 1541. And I believe in here somewhere, there it is, 0.47 microfarad. It's actually 50 volts, but I don't think you can actually get one that's less than that nowadays. They're all like that. It's teeny tiny compared to the other one. I should have realized the actual decimal point is actually on this thing. I, I just didn't, I saw it, I just thought it was a blemish. It's not a blemish, it's 0.47. That is not a 47 microfarad capacitor. That is 0.47. So let's take this thing apart again. 
and let's fix the thing that I goofed up. So I don't know why it needs a 0.47 microfarad capacitor across the motor, but that's what they've done. Now, whether that's gonna stop this from working, I don't know, but let's put the right cap in. Um, didn't seem to make much difference having the wrong cap in there. It was about as bad as before, so it would fail sometimes early on, sometimes later on. All right, which one was it? This one up here. Okay, I have just burned myself in the soldering iron. Oh, that's gonna be a big blister there. I was putting the soldering iron away and I accidentally touched the tip while I did it. Oh yeah, I've got it getting a big blister already. Right, we've got the correct capacitor in now, so let's give this a whirl. Oh, that really hurts. The soldering iron burn really hurts. Well, it's loading. Hopefully we'll get the loading music. Yeah, we've got the loading music. Or have we? That's not right. That music's not right. Oh, it's completely corrupt. <laughs> it's not working. Oh dear. Oh well. So that cap hasn't really changed anything. But um, yeah, let's give it one more go. <laughs> That's really terrible. Oh dear. Whatever it is, it wasn't the caps. The caps has made it behave very strangely. No, that's messed up already. In fact, that cap has actually probably made it a bit worse. So we have other problems. So the, the music's gone really wrong, but it's loading better. Oh, it must have loaded some of the music wrong, so it's out of tune. <laughs> So this is just after cleaning the cleaning the wheels that the belt is attached to. Oh, that's definitely wrong. So I, I suspect this isn't going to load, but I've made an improvement, but it's not working. I've decided to bite the bullet and actually look at the waveform that's coming out of this tape deck and. So I've got the tape deck upside down here. Nemesis is currently loading. I've got the back off, so I can't really see the tape. There is a risk of the tape dropping out right now. And if I just probe this pin here, there you go. You can see that that is probably the analog um, output. Well, one of the analog outputs from the actual tape head itself. I think that is actually amplified already, but it's still quite, it's still quite an analog signal. There is another pin here. Um, that actually gets a more of a, a digital signal coming out of it. So I think that's been amplified again. I think there's four stages of amplification, but I think this is the one I want down here. So it's there's two ICs on this, I think with the various, I think there's like four op amps in here that are amplifying the signals it goes through. And I think this is the one that it gets past just the first stage. So it's, yeah, 1.52 volts peak to peak. We need to adjust the heads to get that at the maximum we can. Now the only problem with that is I can't do this while this is upside down uh, because the screw to access it is on the top and I can't probe it when it's the other way around um, because as you can see here, I'm having to hold the probe on. So I'm probably gonna have to solder a pin or solder a wire onto there, have that hanging out and then somehow have this the other way up so that I can actually probe that pin with this the other way up but without anything the mechanicals touching so i'm going to try and set that up now okay so the scope probe is hooked up to a wire that's soldered to the bottom of that board i am going to start nemesis loading now and hopefully we'll see something happen on the oscilloscope but that's not looking good so far i would be expecting some kind of signal there what is happening there Oop. There we go, got it. Right, so we've got 1.6 volts peak to peak. Let's twiddle this screw. Oh, wait till it loads. Right, I'm turning it. 
wait for it. Right, it's getting less. I'm going to try and turn it the other way. No, it's not getting any better really. It's getting worse there. I think 1.7 volts is about the best I can get. So, as expected, the azimuth alignment is actually pretty good. I think I might have got it a little bit better there, but it's nothing to write home about. There we go, I think that's about as good as I can get it. Whoop. Of course, Nemesis hasn't loaded while I was doing all that. So that's about where I ended up at 1.78 volts peak to peak, which is tiny bit better than what it was. So let's see how we do with the loading. In theory, this is better. I still don't like the way the tape drive actually sounds though. But maybe my initial assumption about azimuth not being the problem really wasn't the problem. The, the tape drive alignment was perfectly fine by the looks of it. Ah uh, yeah, look, it's, it's still not loading. It's still not loading, that's already messed up. So that is disappointing. So let me desolder, let me desolder that wire off the bottom and let's just make sure that that's not causing more interference that's stopping it from working. Okay, so I've just take all I've done now is I've taken the, the scope probe off and I've just put the back on. Uh, let's just give it one more shot uh, and let's see if we get anything better. I am not expecting miracles here. I think this is going to be exactly the same. So this is disappointing. I've I've um, I've roughed up the pinch roller. I've changed the belts. I have done the azimuth alignment, I've replaced the capacitors, and this tape drive, if anything, is now actually worse than it was before. The only other possibility is that there maybe is some kind of mechanical problem in there because it, it just doesn't sound right. It's hard to get it to pick up on the microphone, but it's, it's just not playing right. It sounds like it's going a little bit faster and slower. It, it definitely is, I could hear it then. I think it's got a mechanical problem. Maybe it had that, oh, it's actually worse. Look at that. This is now actually an even worse tape deck than it was before. Wow. Let me just try that again. Maybe I can get this microphone really close to it and you'll be able to hear what's going on here. Because this is not right. Yeah, that, that sounds really bad. I think after all that, it's got some kind of mechanical problem. And that might explain why it couldn't drive even drive the Winter Games tape. Let me try it. I, tr I know this tape doesn't work because I tried it in the other cassette deck, but on this tape drive, this would not even play it. So let's try it, because you can see the amount of tape that this has got on it. Oh no, do you see it stop then? No, that's not it. So it, it can't even drive this tape. Like this tape is not, it's not even able to move it. And it's not, it's not stuck or anything. I don't really know what's going on here. There's a mechanical problem somewhere. It's definitely not on that, that's moving fine. That's really grippy. Maybe this isn't creating enough pressure to move the tape, I don't know. Well, it's, it, I mean, that, that feels quite strong on the motor there. What is the deal? What is wrong? Maybe there's actually a problem with the gears or something in it. Maybe they're worn out. Yeah, that's not supposed to stop there. It just can't drive the tape. So that is the mystery here. What is happening? Why can't you drive that tape? Let's try the eBay special. So yeah, I have no idea if this one works, but let's see if we can do a better job than that one. That's had enough of a clean to get going. So this is the uh, cheapo eBay special. It doesn't sound like it's got as much variation as the other tape. No, it should have found Nemesis by now. It's not even detected the game. This needs work too. And let's try the drive that we know this, this tape worked in before. So I might stop the video here because this has <laughs> been so much in this video already. 
Um, yeah, this is loading. But I think a future video, I need to do even more investigation into that tape deck to find out what's going on with it. And there's more. And just so we don't end the video on too much of a downer, this is the cassette drive that belongs to Lock Marnie Go. And I thought, uh, just off camera, I'd do a bit of service on this just to make sure that this one's all right. And I did the recap that I did on mine. Um, I only replaced the two 47 microfarad caps. Interesting that um, in this one, Commodore had put 47 microfarad 25 volt caps in, so they mustn't have had any 10 volt caps. So I've put 16 volt ones back in instead. And I also did the same azimuth alignment. And this one had pretty good azimuth alignment anyway. It was almost perfect. So I don't think I really changed much there. But one thing of note is that there were a couple of cassettes that this didn't load before. And one of them was Rainbow Islands and that loaded perfectly. I also tried Blood Money, that didn't load before. That's loaded now. Nemesis, of course, still loads. And this tape is unknown. Uh, we didn't know if this worked or not. So this is Night Shift by LucasArts. We didn't know if this was going to work at all, and this one is also working. So currently, it's four for four on loading um, since doing the service, and there were a few things about it that didn't quite work before. So that is good news. So it's possible that the recap has fixed that, because I, I don't think the azimuth alignment was changed. But another thing that's worthy of note is that this is an identical unit to the one I've got. And interestingly, when I put it on the scope, it was only about 750 millivolts peak to peak, whereas mine's measuring about 1.7 volts. So I don't understand why mine's producing like nearly double the, well, over double the voltage um, from the heads, whereas this one isn't, but this one's working and mine isn't. Like I suspect mine's got a mechanical fault, but there's clearly some electrical difference between them as well. So I don't exactly know what's going on there. Uh, I measured it on the scope before and after the recap, and it didn't really change. So I don't know what's happened there. Uh, I've also measured these caps, and they, they also measure, I measured the capacitance on them, and they were 54 microfarads. So these seem quite good. There could be something wrong with them. Like maybe this has fixed it, I'm not sure. But certainly it's working better now than it was. So it's all good news. I'm gonna try a few more games out before this. I've never seen load, IK Plus and Salamander. I don't think I've ever seen load as well. So I'm going to try out a couple of these as well and see if I get any more results. But either way, it's now better than it was before. So it's not been a total disaster. I've managed to do something, finally. Oh yeah, it totally works though. What do you do? Oh, 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 I've fallen to my death. I'm collecting spanners. Can I actually jump? Oh, fire is jump. Oh, that noise. Oh, he does a little leg bend before he jumps. That's nice. Oh, boot. Oh, well, it's not worked correctly, but I tell you what, it actually loaded. So that is not right. Wow, that's really screwed up. How odd. I think it's crashed. Oh well. So, it's not perfect, but I tell you what, I don't think it ever got that far before. That is a shame. I mean, this cassette could still be balked, to be honest. Whoops.